if we take a filled up glass or a bottle out of a refrigerator and keep it at the room temperature for some time then after some time we observe water droplets on the surface of the glass so what did just happen did the water inside the glass come out well it is not the water inside the glass but the water in her surrounding has condensed at the surface of the glass in simple words the water present in her surrounding when comes in contact with the cold surface of the glass it condenses into tiny water droplets and settles on the surface of this glass and for this reason we often find water droplets on the outer surface of a glass when we take it out of a refrigerator so from the previous example we understood that air contains water vapor yes you heard me right air contains water vapor now due to this presence of water vapor in air we can experience different types of weather phenomena like clouds fog snow and rain so all these different types of weather phenomena takes place because air contains water vapor now the amount of water vapor present in air is known as humidity so humidity refers to the amount or quantity of water vapor present in air now in absence of water vapor or no humidity we would not be able to enjoy different types of weather phenomena like clouds fog snow and rain so as mentioned earlier these different types of weather phenomena we get to enjoy because air contains water vapor and this is known as humidity now you must have experienced that during summer we feel hot and sticky and in winter our skin becomes dry and we have to apply moisturizer in order to moisten or protect our skin Now why do we feel hot and sticky during summer but not in winter let's find out The reason is that as temperature rises the air expands so warm air is less dense whereas as temperature drops the air contracts so cold air is compact now since warm air is less dense so its moisture holding capacity is more whereas as cold air is compact and dense so its moisture holding capacity is less and for this reason warm air contains more water vapor than cold air so in the previous video we understood that warm air is less dense and therefore its moisture holding capacity is more than cold air so therefore hot air or warm air contains more water vapor than cold air and due to this reason during summer the air or warm air is already saturated with water molecules and therefore sweats evaporate from our skin very slowly and due to this reason we feel hot and sticky during summer now coming to winter well we know cold air contains less water vapor and therefore it absorbs sweat from our body very rapidly or sweat evaporates from our body very rapidly and our skin becomes dry so since warm air contains more water vapor than cold air therefore during summer we feel hot and sweat a lot whereas during winter we feel dry and cold so we learned that air contains water vapor now apart from water vapor air also contains dust particles now these two elements of air combines with each other or specifically the water vapor condenses around the dust particles and form water drops now this process in which the water vapor transforms into water droplets on cooling is known as condensation Now before proceeding with our lesson let us see if we can answer this the process in which water vapor changes into water droplets on cooling is called evaporation condensation conduction or precipitation what do you think well the correct answer is condensation well we just learned that condensation is a process in which water vapor transforms or changes into water droplets on cooling so the correct option is condensation 
Now these tiny water droplets thus formed remain suspended in air for some time and then they combine with other water droplets in order to form a single cloud droplet. Now these cloud droplet eventually combines with other cloud droplets and form a single large cloud. Thus we understand that clouds are formed due to condensation of water vapor in air. In fact, cloud is an example of condensation in air. Now let us understand the meaning of clouds. Well, clouds refer to tiny masses of water droplets or ice crystals that float in air. So yes, clouds can be formed from tiny water droplets or they may even freeze to tiny ice crystals in higher altitudes. Thus, clouds are masses of tiny water droplets and ice crystals that float in air. Now, we find different types of clouds in the sky and each type of cloud narrates a story. For instance, when you see these dark dense clouds, you know that rain is coming. And when you see these small lumps of clouds, you know that little shower or drizzle is going to occur. Now, not all clouds bring rain. For instance, when you see these types of clouds, you know that it depicts fine weather. Thus, we learn that clouds are tiny droplets of water or ice crystals and clouds are of various types. So now we know that clouds are formed due to condensation of water vapor in air. Now eventually these clouds transform into large dark dense clouds and they became too heavy to remain in air and they burst out and cause rainfall. Now these clouds also cause snowfall in colder regions or in higher altitudes. Thus we understand that water fall onto the earth's surface in the form of rain or snow and this process in which water fall onto the earth's surface in the form of rain or snow is known as precipitation. So precipitation simply means raining or snowfall. So as discussed just now, rain is the liquid form of precipitation. Now these peter patter water drops that you can see in the video are raindrops. Now rain is an integral part of our life. It helps in cultivation or agriculture. Rain is also the natural supplier of water on earth apart from surface water bodies like rivers, oceans etc. Rain is very important for sustenance of life on earth. Now there are various forms of rainfall. Let's know about them. Now sometimes rainfall is caused when the moist wind gets obstructed by a mountain range or a relief feature. Now as the warm moist air gets obstructed by the mountain range, they rise over it and as they ascend the slope of the mountain, the water vapor present in air condenses to form clouds. Now eventually these clouds become too heavy to hold moisture and they shade rainfall in the windward side of the mountain that is the side facing the wind. Now as these wind move down the other side of the mountain, they become too dry as they lose most of its moisture in the windward side and therefore they cause no rainfall in the other side of the mountain that is the leeward side of the mountain that is the side opposite to the wind. Now this type of rainfall that is determined by a mountain range is known as orographic rainfall. Now we will learn about another type of rainfall. We know the sun heats up the ground. Now this warm ground heats up the air lying above it and the hot air rises. On the other hand, the cold air being heavier sinks down. So hot air rises and cold air sinks down and this process continues in the form of a cycle which eventually gives rise to convectional currents. Now the water vapor present in warm air condenses and form clouds. These clouds eventually become too heavy to hold moisture and they shade rainfall. Now this type of rainfall that is induced by convectional currents that is rising of warm air and sinking of cold air is known as convectional rainfall. 
Now we shall discuss about the third type of rainfall. Sometimes rainfall is also caused due to convergence of warm tropical air and cold polar air and this convergence point is known as front. Now the warm tropical air contains moisture and they rise over the cold air because cold air is denser. Now the moisture present in the warm air condenses and forms clouds. Now eventually these clouds become too heavy and they shed torrential rainfall. Now the type of rainfall caused due to convergence of warm air and cold air is known as cyclonic rainfall. So, we discussed about three major types of rainfall that is orographic rainfall, convectional rainfall and cyclonic rainfall. Orographic rainfall is a type of rainfall that is determined by a mountain range or a relief feature. Most of the rainfall is caused at the windward side of the mountain that is the side facing the wind whereas the other side of the mountain that is the leeward side of the mountain experiences little or no rainfall. Now coming to the second type of rainfall that is convectional rainfall. Convectional rainfall is caused due to rising of warm moist air. Now eventually the moisture present in this warm moist air condenses and form large clouds and cause heavy rainfall. Now thirdly we have cyclonic rainfall. Cyclonic rainfall is caused due to the convergence of warm tropical air and cold polar air and rainfall is mostly caused at the convergence point of these two air masses. So these are the three major types of rainfall. So now that we have understood the meaning of rainfall and its various types now let's see how we can measure rainfall. Well, an instrument or a device that helps us to measure the amount of rainfall is known as rain gauge. So this is how a rain gauge looks like and this is the internal structure of a rain gauge. As we can see here, a rain gauge consists of three main parts, a funnel, measuring cylinder and a glass jar. Now initially the raindrops are collected in this measuring cylinder which is calibrated. Now if the amount of rainfall exceeds the volume of the measuring cylinder then for this purpose a hole is present. So if the amount of rainfall exceeds the volume of the measuring cylinder then the extra amount of rainfall comes out through this hole and gets collected in the glass jar. Now the function of this funnel is that it prevents splashing out of water that is all the water droplets will be collected in the measuring cylinder and they will not flash out of it. So these are the three main parts of a rain gauge funnel, measuring cylinder and glass jar. Now let us understand the function of each part. Well initially the amount of rainfall is collected in the measuring cylinder. Now if the amount of rainfall exceeds the volume of the measuring cylinder then the extra amount of rainfall comes out through the hole and it is collected in the glass jar. We can also see that a funnel is placed at the mount of the measuring cylinder. This is because all the rain water should be collected in the measuring cylinder and they should not splash out of it. So this is the internal structure of a rain gauge. Now a rain gauge should always be placed in an open ground as we can see in this picture. This is because if we keep it under a tree or beside a shelter then the water will drip from the roof of the buildings or from the trees and this will give us incorrect reading. So in order to get the correct measurement of rainfall we must always place a rain gauge in an open space. Now this device measures the amount of rainfall either twice or thrice a day and the unit of measuring rain is either in centimeter or millimeter. So we understood that the instrument that helps us to measure the amount of rainfall is rain gauge. So this brings us to the end of today's discussion on an important element of weather and climate that is moisture and precipitation. We first understood that the amount of moisture or water vapor present in air is known as humidity and due to this presence of humidity or water vapor in air we have cloud formation, rain etc. 
Now, precipitation is the process in which water comes down on the earth's surface in the form of rain or snow. And then we discuss about the three main types of rainfall that is orographic rainfall, convectional rainfall and cyclonic rainfall. And then we also discuss that rain gauge is an instrument that helps us to measure the amount of rainfall. So that's all about today's lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now